I had the opportunity to actually get my swing measured on a body track while I was down at the Extraordinary Golf Mastery Program, and it was fascinating. Let's tee it up. Welcome to Data Access Golf, your home for rapid golf improvement. And now, from the thin air of the Rocky Mountains, next on the number one tee, your host, Aaron Stewart. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Data Access Golf, the podcast. I am actually coming to you from Phoenix. I've flown down, I got back from Carmel and, and then spent a night in my own bed with my lovely fa family and then hopped another plane and flew down here to Phoenix. I was able to get out today and play the Raven Golf Club, which was really fun. I played it with a, uh, a, a gentleman I had been um, trying to get out and play with uh, for a while, so trying to get him on the, on the books, and it turned out great today. So we had a super great day, perfect day here in Phoenix. It was actually mid-80s, uh, cloud cover, and we just had a great time. So I'd never, I'd never met him in person, just kind of interacted online, and and we were coming down to the same conference, and it just kind of worked out, and we had a great time today. It was a very good game, and it was a, a very good day of golf. So as many of you know, I've been out of uh, playing for a while just with an injury, and so I can't – This what a great game, right? I mean, it's been, it's been a long time, and just to be able to play the game and not feel any pain. I mean, it's just such a big deal, and um, I, I, I had none. I had none for the three days – in Carmel and I had none today. So today was my first 18 holes in like 18 months. And it was such a joy to be back out playing again and with great company and just had a good time. The game's a little uh, the little a little rusty, but um, it came around towards the last uh, four or five holes. It really felt great. So I'm super excited to be back. What the thing I wanted to talk about is I know we've talked about a variety of technologies on this podcast, and I love technology, and I love geeking out about technology. And as many of you know, that technology nowadays provides us with the ability to get better much more quickly than we could do in the past. And that's just flat out, that's the way it is, uh, period. And I, I mentioned in the, loss, in the last podcast, it, 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 it's sad that we've had to wait for technology to sort of prove uh, a lot of the philosophies of other teachers, golf teachers that were dead on right. And there's just been a lot of folks that didn't sort of buy in. And I, I mentioned, obviously, Fred Shoemaker is the, the person that I work with a lot. His, his seminal book uh, was dead on, that, um, that our bodies are made to propel uh, motions and know exactly what to do when we propel something. And um, uh, most of us make the error of trying to hit a golf ball when really the motion is propelling uh, an object and letting the golf ball get in the way. So, and, and Fred Shoemaker, it's kind of, it's sad. He's, a, he's been an, an expert in preaching the right thing for a long time and, a, and so many have not believed him and not followed along with that and have come up with their own ridiculous techniques. But now with the uh, technology coming out, we're learning that this is the right way to go. And one of those technologies that's been very, very clear on this is the body track. And so Fred Shoemaker's been using this thing for a while. Um, I've actually done some, um, I, I've been working on my certification on body track, which I really appreciate. And, uh, and then a, a good buddy of mine, Elliot, who you all know now uh, that listen to this podcast, he has, he has also become quite the expert on body track. And so we actually had a body track there for the three days we were in Carmel and it was fascinating. Um, we were able to, each one of us was able to take some time and hit some golf balls on the body track and kind of see where our portable force and pressure kind of goes. And, and we talk a lot about weight shifts and all that, and, and that's kind of, uh, it's kind of inaccurate the way we talk about that, because when we talk about weight shifts, we're looking for something. And that's the thing that's really fascinating about body track is um, what, what we were doing is we would go ahead and hit a ball with a, you know, just hit a golf ball. And then Fred actually had a sort of um, making a throwing motion uh, while we were on the body track. And again, I mean, it, it's, it's so very cool. Um, I'll, 
So any really good golfer, especially those that play this game for a living, when they get on a body track, what we see is um, they start going, they move back to their right, the back foot in the heel, about 95% of their weight goes back there during the backswing. And as they get up to the top, that first little move, literally the club and everything doesn't really move. And you can't really, dis you can't really see this necessarily with the naked eye. It's just sort of this gathering and then this, this, some people bump, whatever, but some people don't even seem to move at all. But all of the pressure, they can go from 95, 95% um, of the pressure uh, that they're putting out um, whether it's the weight of the body or they're pushing on something or whatever, 95% of whatever's available and putting, put, being put on that mat is found in the back, um, in the back heel of the back foot. So the heel of the back foot, that for, as it gathers at the top, that first little, it's not even, some people don't even make a move, that first little move down, we see all the weight going to the front foot, to the front ball of the foot. 95% and it stays there and goes all the way up to, you know, 99% all the way through impact, which is just fascinating when you think about it. Um, it doesn't, and it doesn't show up as a weight shift. You've got some people dead center. Um, we see that their, their hips are turning. That's another, that's another big thing that we're noticing that their hips, um, and, and that's what keeps the weight kind of going. There's this, you know, pressure into the, in the front a ball of the foot and then this turn that kind of brings the, the club in and it was just sort of fascinating to swing the club and look at it and then and then and then make a throwing motion and kind of see how the weight goes well every single one of us that was on this body track um, gathered and put all 90% to a you know 99% of our weight back into the back heel and then when we went to throw a ball it all went to the front foot and it stayed there until the, the ball was thrown, until it was gone. And um, so that is a natural motion. Uh, once again, proving unequivocally that Fred Schumacher has been right all along. That when we throw a ball, which is essentially propelling, the same as throwing a golf club, that, that that's it. That's our natural motion. That's how we work. And, and it, the fact that it matches what a tour player does perfectly is proof. That's the way you do it. That's the way you play for a living, is by switching pressure like that. The first little move down puts all the weight on that front ball of uh, the front uh, ball of what is what am I trying to say? The ball of the front foot. There you go. I got the words mixed up. So that's it. I mean, that's how we do it. Um, what was fascinating for me is when we measured my swing, I I I, I go back. I put all the weight on the back foot. Um, on the heel, I load it all up really nicely. I kind of gather it and make that first little bump. It all goes to the front toe. I mean, 90, I was like at 98% where I switched the pressure to that front, front foot. But then as the club came down, when I was going to hit a ball, the weight from, and I, I excuse me, not the weight, the pressure that I was putting between my two feet started to build back up so it went to the front and started to build back into the back so when I actually struck the ball I was like 50 50 front and back foot not good not the way you're supposed to be and so I kind of go through it and then uh, I would actually kind of go through impact and then more weight would go to my back uh, not weight darn it pressure more pressure would go to my back foot like it, it got up to like 55 60 percent and then all of a sudden it would go whoosh, whip back to the front foot and I'd, I'd pull off a finish, right? So I had this sort of this back and forth jig going on on, um, on, uh, on body track. And the interesting thing about it is if you look at my swing face on with video and body track takes a video as you're doing this, uh, you cannot see any of that in the way I'm standing. You can't see the change of pressure. You can see it definitely going to the back and me loading up and you can see the pressure sort of, there's sort of a bump to the front, but it's not very much. You can't believe that it goes 95, 99% from the back heel to 90, 90 to 95, 99% to the front toe, but it does just boom in an instant. The club hasn't moved, boom, it's over there. And then to have it sort of work its way back to the back foot, 
Um, you can't see it in video. You can't see that pressure moving like that in video. And that's been the big weakness of video. There was no way to tell that this was actually going on in the golf swing and that there it was, plain and simple with data, instant feedback, accurate feedback, that that's what I was doing. And so then I knew I could go back to what I was working on and see if I could actually feel the pressure do that. And so that's essentially where I'm at right now. I'm really trying to figure uh, and feel and be aware of how I adjust pressure in my feet through the golf swing. And so it's completely brilliant, really cool to have this tool. And I, I would definitely encourage uh, any of you out there, if you want to kind of get an idea of how, um, how you're moving and if you're moving properly, find somebody with a body track, uh, go out and, and, you know, throw a couple golf balls and get the measurement there. That's what your body should be doing. <clears throat> and then if, you know, and then, and then hit a ball. And, and take those readings and you'll instantly know what you need to work on. Now, working on that, I would definitely suggest finding a coach that can make sure that you're uh, doing things properly. Uh, I, of course, recommend Fred Shoemaker and Extraordinary Golf, golf Schools, <laughs> for sure. Um, but definitely find, um, if, you, if you find that you have not, uh, that you have not uh, moved your weight uh, as efficiently as you did in your throw, then find somebody that can help you sort of work on whatever that is. And, and that can definitely be broken down and looked at, whether it's in video, I definitely, I think that I'll be looking more at sort of a swing bite and kind of figuring out uh, if there's any sort of changes in my swing plan or anything going on there. Um, I think that there's probably, um, there's definitely more speed in your golf swing if you've got everything up on the left-hand side. In fact, the um, Elliot was cool to kind of share with us some of the stuff that he's learning. So they've learned through um, looking at tour player swings on the body track that the, um, the quicker that pressure moves from the back heel to the front toe, the, more, the higher the speed of the swing. Okay, so there's something with that going. When you really let that go, everything else goes. So to pick up power and distance and all that, that pressure needs to go from the back heel to the front toe just as quick as possible and then stay there, um, not let it leak back to the back foot like mine's doing. So really fascinating stuff. Definitely recommend you to go out and find a body track uh, somewhere near you. They are, I think they're kind of changing the way people look at their swings. And, and it's definitely, again, I think the pros have figured this out without the body track, but it's so cool to have their measurements so we can look at it for ourselves. And we've learned very quickly that a lot of us as amateurs don't do it the right way. We are still hitting balls instead of propelling objects. And so our bodies aren't working right. And body track is just another tool to show us exactly what we're not doing right. It's just completely fascinating. So definitely do that. Um, hope you get out and to enjoy golf this weekend. Pretty cool to watch the uh, PGA Tour uh, playing out at Trinity Forest, which looks like a pretty cool course. Honestly, I, I was uh, wondering what it would look like, but um, really cool looking course. Uh, please remember better data means better golf. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Data Access Golf with Aaron Stewart. Check us out online at dataaccessgolf.com, and we'll see you on the next episode.